What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the How to Vegan podcast. My name is Kristen Pound. I'm so glad that you are tuning in today. Today's episode is going to be all about sugar. It's been a little bit since I've done one of these What's the Deal with episodes, and I know you guys love them, so here I am with another one for you. I actually posted a poll in my How to Vegan Facebook group asking which episode my group members would like to hear first, and What's the Deal with Sugar was the winner by so many votes. Like, I thought that that was going to be one of the lower ones, but a lot of people want to know what's the deal with sugar. So that is what we're diving into today. Is it vegan? Is it not vegan? All of that stuff. So today's episode is going to be hopefully not too long, hopefully a little bit of a shorter episode. It's pretty straightforward, but it's going to be a good one for sure. I hope y'all are staying safe. I hope y'all are staying healthy. I've said it in the last couple of episodes and I still feel like I want to say it because all of this COVID shit is still going down and It's just a little reminder to stay safe, stay healthy, wear a face mask if you're going in public and you're going to be around other people, wash your hands often, all that shit. So stay safe, stay healthy. I love you guys and I would not want anything to happen to you and to any of the people that you're around. So just wanted to say that again because I think it's super important. And speaking of the coronavirus slash COVID stuff, I am still giving away my Healthy Vegan Starter Kit ebook for free right now during these quarantine times. So I'll leave a link in the description slash show notes of this episode, or you can just head on over to kristenpound.com and click on Vegan Starter Kit, and you'll be able to download it just for free, just free right now. It includes two weeks of meal plans, more than 20 healthy, delicious, and affordable vegan recipes, grocery lists that go with those meal plans, and more. So head on over there. There's not like a little discount code or anything you need. You can just click on Vegan Starter Kit and you can get it for free. And I've been getting lots of questions lately about working from home and how I got into what I'm doing, especially because more people are working from home and considering working from home or have been let go from their jobs and are wanting to find something where they can work from home and create their own schedule and work in the wellness field and do something that just makes them feel good. So if you're interested in learning more about how I got to where I am and how I'm doing the job slash jobs that I'm doing, which is working from home, producing this podcast for you guys, creating YouTube videos for you guys, all of that stuff that I am doing working from home. I got my health coaching certification from the Institute for Integrative Nutrition like five years ago. I think it's been five years now. And it was one of the best decisions of my entire life. It changed my life so much. And I'm so thankful that I was introduced to IIN. So it's a one year online program. It is amazing. The teachers are amazing. The lectures are amazing. It's just, it's such an amazing program. I absolutely loved it. I learned so much and they set you up to be a health coach as soon as you graduate from the one year online program. So if you're interested in learning more, then I will leave a link in the show notes to their free curriculum guide and you can check it out. And if you use me as your referrer, you will get a huge chunk of money off of your tuition. And they even offer payment plans, which is what I did because I was like, I don't want to pay the whole tuition up front. I couldn't at the time. I was like bartending. So I did the payment plan. It was amazing. And like I said, it was just one of the best decisions of my life. And I'm so grateful that I did it. So if you're wondering how to create your own business and do what you want to do in the health and wellness sphere, then definitely check out the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. It was great. I'll leave a link in the show notes for you for sure. Okay, so let's get into today's topic. I don't want to talk too much in these intros. I'm really trying to dive into the topic a little bit more quickly. So let's get into today's topic. What's the deal with sugar? The question of the day, is sugar vegan? This is asked all of the time in my How to Vegan Facebook group. People ask all the time, is sugar vegan? Or someone will post a picture of an ingredients list saying, is this vegan? And it has sugar in it. Otherwise, maybe it's completely vegan. And people in the comments will always be like, has sugar in it. It's not vegan. Or people say, yes, it's totally vegan. So 
This is a controversial topic. These what's the deal with episodes are typically about controversial topics. That's why I like to dive into them like this, because it's not just like, is sugar vegan? Yes. Is sugar vegan? No. So that's why I like to do these episodes so that I can kind of lay it all out there for you and let you decide what feels best for you. So is sugar vegan? Well, the short answer is yes and no which isn't confusing at all, is it? So sugar in itself is vegan, but just like alcohol, if you listen to the what's the deal with alcohol episode, then it's just like that. The issue lies in the processing of the sugar. So that's why it's kind of yes and no, and I'm gonna dive into that. So when we're talking about whether sugar is vegan or not vegan, we are talking about refined sugar, AKA table sugar, that white stuff, the sugar we most commonly use in baking. The two main types of sugar that we use are made from either sugar cane or beets. So let's start with sugar cane sugar, sugar made from sugar cane. To make refined sugar from sugar cane, the sugar cane stalks are crushed and that separates the juices from the pulp. And then the juice is processed, filtered, and bleached with bone char, which is burnt up animal bones. And the bone char, the animal bone char, strips the sugar of its color and also its nutrients. So that pure white color we associate with sugar, that comes from the filtration through the animal bone char. Bone char, which is also referred to as natural carbon, is widely used by the sugar industry as a filter that decolorizes it. So it turns it from kind of like a brownish color to a really white color and it refines it, which makes it really small granules. So it's not chunky. It's that really fine, really white sugar that we commonly know, you know, if you buy a packet of regular sugar, the cheap sugar from the grocery store, that is probably refined through animal bone char. And guess what animal bone char is made of? It's made from the bones of animals, typically cattle, who were slaughtered in foreign countries. And these bones of these animals are sold to traders in other foreign countries who then sell them to the United States sugar industry. And why from other countries? Like, why not in the United States? Well, due to health concerns, the FDA prohibits the use of bones from animals that were in the United States meat industry, which is why they import them. And just so you know, the animal bones are required, technically required, to come from animals that die of natural causes, but no one really makes sure that that happens. So they're supposed to be from bones of animals that were already killed um, for probably food reasons, but just, just most, no one's really monitoring that. One kind of positive in all of this weirdness is that the bone char is repeatedly washed and reused. So it's not like they use the animal bone char once, discard it, get a bunch more. They they reuse it, they wash it and reuse it. So that's kind of one positive in yeah, this weird, th- this is so weird. Like once I found out this was a thing, I was like, what? This seems so weird. Same with the alcohol stuff. If you haven't listened to What's the Deal with Alcohol episode, go listen to that because it's just like, why? Why do we, why did we start doing this weird stuff? Because people liked the look of this white crystally sugar and the fine granules. It's like, ugh, just don't start doing this shit. It's so weird to me. So it is important to note that this type of refined sugar does not actually contain the bone char. Like there's no bone char in the sugar. The bone char looks like, like it looks like sugar kind of, but it looks black or like dark gray. So there's none of that in the sugar or else you would see it. So like I said, sugar in itself is vegan. It's totally vegan. The the product in itself is vegan, but because it's part of the process, the bone char is part of the process. Some vegans choose to not eat this kind of refined sugar. And just so you're aware, it's not just the hella white, hella refined sugar we're talking about here. Brown sugar and powdered sugar all can classify as refined sugar because brown sugar is made by adding molasses to that refined white sugar. So if you're buying from a company that uses bone char in their white sugar, it's also going to be used to make the brown sugar because it's the same thing and they just add molasses to it. And then confectioner sugar, aka powdered sugar, which is just refined sugar 
typically mixed with cornstarch, like the refined sugar blended up till it's like really, really, really fine, typically mixed with cornstarch, also involves the use of bone char. So it's not just the white sugar, it's also the brown sugar and confectioner sugar. Any kind of refined sugar made from the sugarcane plant is going to be filtered through animal bone char. And like I just said, this bone char filter process is totally unacceptable to many vegans. And I get it because it sounds disgusting and it sounds unnecessary. And it's like, why? I get it. I get why it started, but just like, stop, just stop. People can eat non-white sugar. Like, Ah, it's annoying. So if sugar that is refined with this animal bone char is just not something that you're wanting to consume, you're wanting to support, then the only way to avoid it is to not buy white cane sugar or not purchase products with this white cane sugar unless it is specifically labeled vegan and to avoid processed food that lists sugar on the label if they don't have any like additional details. It has sugar in the ingredients list, but it doesn't say vegan sugar or the product itself isn't labeled vegan. That's why you'll see items at the grocery store that appear to be totally 100% vegan labeled as vegetarian instead of vegan if they contain sugar in their ingredients list. I see this a lot at Trader Joe's, just an FYI. Like I see a lot of stuff that's totally vegan. It has sugar in it and it's labeled vegetarian. And it's because the sugar is not organic and therefore not like technically vegan because in the process somewhere along the way, animals are used. It's kind of confusing because animals are used in lots of ways without actually ending up in the final product. But I've seen in the past things labeled vegan and then somebody saying, you know, in the comments or something saying, hey, this has sugar in it. It's not organic sugar. It's not actually vegan. And then the company changing the label from vegan to vegetarian or just not saying anything at all. Okay, so we talked about sugar cane sugar. What about sugar made from beets? Well, beet sugar is never processed with bone char. Therefore, it is always vegan, which is good to know. The beets are processed through osmosis, where the sugar is extracted from really thin thinly sliced layers of the sugar beet after it's been submerged in hot water. And then it's filtered through a machine, not animal bone char, and a little bit of lime is added to reduce impurities. And the lime also helps it achieve the desired pH balance. So beet sugar is never processed with bone char, therefore it's always vegan. So if you see something, you know, beet sugar, you don't have to worry about it. If it's sugar cane sugar, don't trust it unless you know. If you're wanting to avoid anything processed with animal bone char, which some vegans do and some vegans don't. I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. Well, what about if it's organic sugar made from sugar cane? Certified U.S. Department of Agriculture organic sugar cannot be filtered through bone char. So if it's organic, it is going to be vegan, whether it's beet or sugarcane sugar, because bone char is not considered to be an organic product in the U.S. So if you see organic sugar, it's going to be vegan, which is just what I buy. Like I just buy organic sugar and then that way I know it's vegan and we're good to go. So in the organic process of making sugar, the sugar cane juices are boiled and then spun around in like a centrifuge thing, which spins it all out to the edge. And then it's dried into sugar crystals. So the sugars are definitely not pure, pure white, but it's still the same thing. And it can be substituted in any recipe that normal sugar, like normal, I guess. It's not really normal to use animal bone char, but the typical kind of sugar that people are used to using, that white table sugar. So if you're wanting to use sugar in a recipe, you can just use organic sugar and you don't have to worry about the animal bone char stuff. So it's also worth noting that sugar cane is typically grown on some of the grossest, super pesticide drenched fields. They use so many pesticides when they're growing sugarcane. Out of any food product out there, it is one of the grossest and just so, so much pesticides used. And after they harvest the sugarcane, the fields are burned to the ground, killing any and all animals and insects who have been living there. So this is another reason why you and other vegans may want to choose organic sugarcane products from growers who hopefully choose more ethical and sustainable ways of 
producing, growing, and harvesting their sugarcane. So buy organic if you can, buy fair trade sugar if you can, look for the fair trade logo on the front of the sugar bag. It really is super important to try to support these kinds of practices if possible. Besides organic, some other words you can look for to know that your sugar is vegan are words like raw, unfiltered, or again, made from beets. So if it's raw sugar, it's not going to be filtered through animal bone char. Same with unfiltered means the same thing, not filtered through animal bone char. And again, either organic or made from beets because beet sugar is never filtered through animal bone char. And I'll provide a link to a list of verified vegan sugars in the show notes for you. So you can, you know, know which ones are vegan, which ones are not. And next time you're shopping at the store, if you want to avoid sugar that's filtered through animal bone char, you can buy those sugars instead. And if you just don't want to deal with it much at all, and you don't want to buy sugar anyway, because you're not sure if it's going to be vegan or not, there are lots of non-sugar alternatives that you can buy. Agave nectar, coconut sugar, which is always vegan, monk fruit. There is such a thing as bee-free honey. It's H-O-N-E-E. I'll leave a link for that because honey isn't vegan. I have a what's the deal with honey episode, which is super, super interesting. So go listen to that if you haven't yet. There's brown rice syrup, date syrup or date sugar, maple syrup, molasses, stevia, which is good for diabetics as as it has a zero glycemic index. I dislike slash, okay, I hate the taste of stevia for some reason, but some people swear by it and love it. So um, those are some options for some like non-sugar alternatives. If you're just like, I don't want to eat sugar. I don't, it's not it's not healthy for you. It's not something we should be eating a lot of. One of my favorites is date syrup. Um, You can make that at home by blending up dates with water and straining it. I also use maple syrup a lot and I use coconut sugar sometimes too. So if you want to not even have to worry about it, those are some alternatives for you. But just be aware that they are used in different amounts when you replace them. Just do a quick Google search to make sure you know how much to use of each, especially if you're baking when that shit makes a really big difference because the level of sweetness and density and all that stuff really differs. So it's not just like a complete substitute for sugar. Just make sure you're like doing a Google search to know how much to use of those. But there are alternatives if you're not down with the whole sugar thing. So in my opinion, products that have zero animal products in the final product are vegan. So yes, in my eyes, all white table sugar is technically vegan, but I definitely prefer to buy organic and fair trade sugar for use at home. But if I'm looking at buying something at the grocery store or out at a restaurant that contains refined sugar, but is otherwise 100% vegan, then I'll usually buy it or order it. So say I'm at Trader Joe's and I flip a package over and something is 100% vegan, but it has sugar listed in it and it's not organic sugar. I'll still buy it typically. So in my eyes, it's vegan. Even though it's filtered through animal bone char, these animals are not being killed for the production of the sugar. The bones are being reused over and over again. They were already killed. The animals were already dead and there's no animals in the final product. So that's kind of my take on it. And I know a lot of people disagree. I know that there's, this is a controversial topic, but that's kind of my take on it. And I know it'd be pretty hard for a lot of new vegans to avoid all animal products, you know, things that they're not used to avoiding as well as sugar, as well as refined sugar. And I think that would turn a lot of people away from the vegan movement. So maybe you go vegan and you do no animal products for a while. And then maybe eventually you're like, now I'm going to stop eating things that have sugar in them because it was filtered through animal bone char. Or maybe you're like, you know, I'm vegan and I still eat that and that's totally okay with me. Like I always say, you do you. If it bothers you that it's filtered through animal bone char, don't consume it, don't purchase it. But I'm telling you, there is sugar in almost everything, at least processed foods, almost everything. It's in so many things. So if you're a new vegan or if you're just, you eat out a lot or if you're on the road, it is going to be so hard to avoid sugar, like so hard. So just keep that in mind. It's doable. I know people that do it and they eat super whole foods and they check the ingredients list and it has sugar in it and it's not organic. They just don't buy it or eat it. But 
in my opinion, it is vegan, technically vegan, because it's not in the final product. And I typically eat it. But at home, I don't use white table sugar because that's something I can can control more. So I buy organic sugar and I buy fair trade sugar. And like I said, I'll leave a list of vegan sugars in the show notes for you. And another thing to keep in mind or to think about is that even if the sugar was processed without bone char, it was most likely grown in soil that contains animal products, just like all of our food. Most of the soil that our food is grown in is fertilized with fertilizer that contains animal products, except with the exception of the of veganic foods, which is foods grown in vegan soil. But most crops are grown with fertilizer that or soil that contains animal products. So don't stress out too much worrying that you're not vegan enough. And when I say vegan enough, I'm putting it in quotes, um, quotations, if you want to consume products containing refined sugar, because eating vegan isn't about 100% perfection. That just isn't possible. The goal of eating vegan is to help animals and do the best that we can to reduce any amount of suffering that we can while we still live a normal life. That's a huge part of it is that we need to make this sustainable for us so that we don't just say, fuck this, this is too hard. I don't want to do this anymore. Because because there's that the vegan police are a thing and they will come for you and say, you're not vegan enough. And I've seen it happen so many times in my Facebook group where people are like, hey, I'm a new vegan and I'm trying to work through some of this stuff, you know, and later on down the comments, people are attacking them like, you're not vegan enough. You're not vegan. Stop calling yourself that. And in the end, these people leave my group saying, fuck this. This is way too hard, way too strict. I'm just going to go back to how I was living. And that is not the point. So just remember this, that veganism isn't about perfection. It's really doing the best we can, focusing on the animals, trying to reduce suffering and still living a normal life for ourselves. So you do you do what feels best for you. This is the information that I have about this. And I just, again, the the point of this podcast is to lay all this information out for you and allow you to make a decision that feels best for you because everybody's different and what works best for one person isn't going to work best for the other. And you just need to work. You just need to find out what works best for you. And just remember, we live in an imperfect world right now, at least. And all we can do right now is the best that we can. So just be gentle with yourself. Be gentle with others. If that's your personality type, if you're one of those like vegan police people, then keep doing you. We need that too. All forms of activism are needed. And just remember that we, all of us here want the same thing, a world that doesn't exploit animals. So do what feels best for you. But here's the information that I have and my opinion on it and my thoughts on it and how I kind of live my life. So I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you liked this episode. If you have any questions for me, feel free to join my How to Vegan Facebook group and you can ask questions in the group. There are over a hundred thousand members there and it is such a good place to ask questions, especially if you're a new or aspiring vegan. It is a very safe, supportive, loving, non-judgmental community where you can ask questions. You can post pictures of your food. It's for vegans and non-vegans alike. So it's a very safe space compared to lots of other vegan Facebook groups out there where they're really, really intense. So if you're looking for a safe space, join How to Vegan. You can also hit me up in my DMs on Instagram. I love chatting with you guys there. And yeah, if you have any questions about anything that I mentioned, let me know. I hope it was really clear for you. Um, It's pretty straightforward and, but I'm here for you if you need anything. Definitely make sure you're subscribed to the How to Vegan podcast on your favorite listening platform. Turn on your auto downloads for this podcast so you'll be able to listen to the new episodes no matter where you are. It'll already be downloaded to your phone so it won't use up your data. You won't have to worry about if you have service or not. So turn on your auto downloads. If you're loving the podcast, then please head on over to Apple Podcasts, the Apple Podcasts app. Leave a rating, leave a review. I love reading your reviews. They mean so much to me. I love knowing 
how much you're enjoying the podcast. So if you haven't left a review yet, hop on over to the Apple podcast app after you're done listening or just pause it right now and leave a rating, leave a review. It means a lot to me. So thank you guys so much for doing that. And don't forget to share this episode with any of your friends, any of your family who might be interested in this information. Go ahead, share that vegan love. It feels good. And that ripple effect is so real. So real. I was just talking about that today with Casey. I was like, oh my God, it's so cool to talk to somebody about veganism and then see them talking to their friends and family about veganism. And then who knows where it goes from there. And it's just the ripple effect is amazing. So you guys know, I always say that the ripple effect is so real. For the full show notes, including links to everything that I mentioned in this episode, click on the link in the description of today's episode, or you can just head straight there by typing in kristenpound.com forward slash podcast and finding this episode, and I'll leave links to everything that I mentioned in this episode. If you have any ideas for an episode, please let me know. I will definitely add them to my list or bump them up on my list. So if there's something that you're really wanting me to talk about, let me know. I love hearing from you guys. And like I said, feel free to send me a DM with any questions you might have. I love sending little voice message responses to you guys when you have questions or comments or anything like that. So feel free to hit me up if you need anything. I'm totally here for you. So thanks again for listening to this episode. I appreciate and love every single one of you. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying healthy. I can't wait for all of this to kind of, I don't know, who knows when all of this is going to end. It's probably never going to actually end. Things are going to be different for a while now, but I hope you're doing your part and staying safe and staying smart. And I hope you're healthy and feeling well. And yeah, I hope you are just having an amazing day. I love you so much and I'll catch you in the next episode of the How to Vegan podcast. Peace.